Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Ted, coach of the Pummel and Licky Lickies, and today I'm bringing you another BDL video. Um, this season I'll be doing the power rankings for the BDL S, or BDL Steering Shot. Um, so th uh, this time around we decided to split into the two divisions with BDL V Create and v BDL Steering Shot. Um, today I'm joined by two coaches. Um, by Ryan and uh, Miss Mag, say hello. Hi, how's it going, everybody? Hey, what's up, guys? And uh, today uh, we're going to be going over the different teams um, between uh, so it's between Emerald and Platinum divisions. So first off, we're going to go through Emerald first, and then we're moving on to uh, Platinum. So uh, starting off. The first team is the Cambridge Camerups. Uh, what's your guys' overall uh, view of this team? Uh, it looks uh, like they knew what they wanted. They went. Uh, it's like this is like a very. There's a very heavy sun mode here with like uh, Charizard, Nine Tails, uh, the uh, Shiftry, but it's also got a lot of things that are kind of weak to fire. So. Um, kind of almost like a double-edged sword in its fire and uh, i'm not seeing a lot of out outright support for garchomp really other than like a, a tailwind from uh but overall still not bad um look forward to see how how it goes yeah um i personally know the coach of this team um mm -hmm. uh they're they they tend they tend to draft this sort of type of team, um, having to switch between their trigger mode and their fast mode. Uh, obviously, their trigger mode with Mister Rhyme, um, Mybell does does decently well in trick room, um, from what mm. I've seen in past drafts. Um, yeah, I think I think they have they have a decently strong sun mode here. Uh, I, I'm I'm not really a fan of uh, shift tree in the sun, but it does have some decent usage. Um, uh, with nine tails, um, obviously they have a good they have a good uh, fake out support and Toji Namaru uh, protects the Charizard uh, with lightning rod, so I I, I like that a lot uh, uh, from this team. Then Shiftry is also very fast in the sun with its own fake out, so uh, anyone facing this team definitely should be aware of you may not be able to attack <laughs> with both of your mons yeah. at any time. Yeah, I, I actually have to face uh, or have faced this nine tail Shiftry combo in a in another league, one that allowed Dynamax. But Shiftry is, I feel like it's deceptively good for its tiering. You get that fast fake out. You get the dark typing, which stops you know pranksters from trying to inflict like any kind of harm to you. And you get some flexibility in running special or physical sets because Shiftry gets some surprising special coverage that I had to learn the hard way. Um, so I do like that piece. Uh, I like the trick room piece of this team as well. If this team had any bit of redirection, I think it would be like incredibly terrifying. Like the only thing really kind of saving it is saving opponents against it in some ways is that Mr. Rhyme is the only way to set up trick room and it's one of the only fake out users this team has. So to try to get up trick room, you're either going to have to rely on ally switch, which I don't think anything on this team gets. Other than rhyme itself, or you'll have to set it up with like shift tree. Yeah, uh, I would agree with that. And like a wild card, this well, I would say a wild card for this team is definitely that Heracross. Now I know uh, Wombo, who's the commissioner of the league, favorite uh, favorite Pokemon is Heracross. Um, so I'm I'm very interested to seeing how uh, the coach goes about of uh, playing Heracross into this into this scheme of of this team. So I, I, this, that's one of the things that I'm interested about uh, going forward into the season. Um, so, uh, yeah, is that all for this team? Anything else uh, you guys want to say about it? Um, I think uh, I think it's it's fine. I don't have too many complaints, too many yeah. concerns. I, I agree. I think this is a solid team. This definitely reflects someone who came in with a very clear plan and more or less probably got everything they wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you guys. Um, so the next team is 
the uh, Alteco uh, Alteco de Mawile, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, they have Incineroar, Latias, Milotic, uh, Terrakion, Delmise, Morgrem, Slowbro, Galar, Rotong Fan, Buffalant, Toxicroat, and Lycan Rock Midnight form. Um, I feel like uh, uh, with this team, they, they definitely have a good amount of support, uh, especially with the Morgrem. I feel like that's going to be their main uh, booster of support, especially with Prankster Screen, Fake Out, Thunder Wave, Fake Tears, uh, just just to name a few moves. Um, yeah. uh, Delmize paired up with Slowbro is really good in Trick Room. Um, Slowbro can go over a, a very offensive mode uh, with Own Tempo, uh, paired with Obamon with Swagger. Uh, I've seen that in a Dynamax League before. I got destroyed by Slowbro. Um, so it's, it's not something that it's not something uh, out of the ordinary here. Um, Toxicroat is also another good support um, with fake out coaching, uh, just a few moves. Um, this team is, uh, can definitely stop and intimidate because uh, that that my that my Lodic is going to be hard to break through, uh, especially mm. with competitive. So, uh, uh, opposing teams will have to be very wary of, not, of whether to bring intimidate uh, or not to bring intimidate. So. Uh, that's just my overview of this team yeah. in the surface. Uh, yeah, I definitely uh, like the uh, trick room mode with like the slow bro and the uh, Delmise. The slow bro is actually a mixed attacker, so you'd have to really guess whether it's physical or special. And then even uh, like its shell sidearm is in itself kind of a both a physical and a special move. So. Uh, Always something to think about. If he's running the quick claw with it, it has like a, I think this, I think the chance of it going first if it has like quick draw and quick claw is like forty one percent or something like that. So uh, uh, always something an opponent has to think about. He could be running the speedy slow bro with the extra chances of going first inside the priority bracket. Um, interesting to see what they do with the Terrakion here. Um, Usually, when you see a track on a draft team, at least in Generation 8, you're thinking, okay, it's going to be a beat-up thing, but as far as I'm aware, beat-up isn't as viable as a strategy in a non-max league, so um, it's definitely kind of the wild card on that team, uh, what he can use the, the track on to do, um, other than beat-up justified shenanigans. I actually really like the Terrakian pick because it covers, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it gets wide guard. I know it gets yeah. quick guard. I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. Mm-hmm. Since it's like- yeah, so I yeah, so I definitely like it as like, you know, wide guard is very useful in a non-max league with all of the spread moves. Um, but sort of more to the point about the beat up justified, he has a lot of sucker punch users, so he could even do sucker punch side into scarf rock slide and you know, he'll basically be at a plus one attack, plus one speed. And that's pretty good, even if you're not getting the full Monty out of that, because tracking still hits pretty hard. Yeah, it's wide big. guard, not quick guard. I'm no other way around. It gets quick guard, not wide guard. Ah, it doesn't get wide guard. Ah, that's okay. a bummer. Well, quick guard is actually really good, especially in this format, when fake out is yeah. mainly prominent or, around all the teams. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I, mainly I, specific I in, in, in both leagues, so... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's 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 an, that's another move that uh, uh, which could definitely explore. Um, yeah, the guard season. moves like both wide and quick are really good in these uh, non Dynamax formats. Yeah, so, most okay. definitely. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Um, what me personally, what I think the most wild card Pokemon out of this team is specifically that Rotom fan. Um, I have seen Rotom Fan in, in a, do well in the Dynamax format. However, I've not seen it. Uh, I've I've not seen anybody draft it in a non-Dynamax league. So I'm really interested mm-hmm. to see how well it does in this format, especially when moves like Rockside, Icy Wind, uh, those moves are a little bit more common um, in in this format. Or if Lycan Rock gets wide wide guard. Yeah. Um, is that is is that all for for this team? Any complaints? Any other um, praises for this team? Um, no, nah, they seem like they have a pretty solid like trick room sort of mode and a fast mode because I think Gladius does get Tailwind. 
Um, even though Rotom fan can't use okay, Max okay. Airstream. What's that? How uh, does Zadius get both? Uh, I don't know. It just gets Tailwind. It doesn't get yeah. Supreme. Okay, well, you know, he's got he's got decent speed control on both modes, and, you know, even though Rotom Fan can't use Max Airstream, it still has a really wide support move pool from, you know, being a Rotom for him, so it'll be good to see what he makes, uh, what he, how he makes use of it. Yeah. Um, so, the next team is the Cardiff Kamalas, um, a Cardiff team, um, so uh, their team is uh, Landorus Incarnate, uh, Tapu Koko, Umbreon, uh, Duraludon, Gyarados, Sceptile, Centiscorch, Sock, Lopunny, Togepi, and Purloin. Uh, what are you guys' general thoughts about this team? Uh, some really good pieces. Uh, that Landorus Incarnate was really good, at least in the... Uh, official format of series 10 like laddering and stuff that was yeah always had to account for that somehow uh, uh we've seen umbreon do really well in these uh in max formats with the um legendaries specifically but i don't know how well it really does uh in a non-max format so that's gonna be a little bit it's always good to have uh really good bulk so you can't talk you can never question umbreon's bulk and then a lot of uh, good cores there. We got a good water. I feel like that's a pretty good water, fire, water, grass core. So yeah, it's not bad. I like the low punny there. I've always been a fan of uh, the shenanigans that uh, Lopunny can uh, get up to. So I like this. I like the stuff. Maybe the two tier fives and Purloin and Togepi. I'm not that much of a fan of, but other than that, no complaints. Yeah, um, I feel like th this team is going to be. Mostly heavily relying on that Umburden stuff with uh, Septel and Tapu Koko. Um, you could see a lot of Disquakes uh, coming from um, Tapu Koko and the uh, Landers Incarnate. Now, typically, uh, Le uh, Lando Incarnate is mostly a special attacker. However, you can run a fiscal set on that. So uh, the Disquake option is definitely there. Yeah, with Coco's um, hidden ability being telepathy, he could uh, ignore the turn, not even bring the terrain mode and just uh, lead that, and that'd be uh, really hard to uh, go against. Yeah. Um, I feel like uh, the redirection is definitely going to help a little bit here, especially since Togepi won't go down turn one from a max steel spike or a max poison or whatever. So I feel like it's going to definitely take a few hits, especially in a non dynamax format. So I, I really like the redirection, especially for this team, uh, whose certain mods are really frail, uh, like Septel and Gyarados. So um, I feel like that, that's a good pick uh, on them. Yeah, I mean, I like how, even though their team looks a little top-heavy, like Lando, I, Tapu Koko, Umbreon, they got their budget, they got their support picks on a real budget. Like Lopunny, Togepi, and Perlane are some of the best lower tier supports in draft in general. Um, and I think that's amazing that they managed to get all of this on one team, <laughs> actually. Yeah. Um, even though it's, it's an interesting team because they don't have any trick room setters. But they have a really fast after you user and a really slow after you user, so they actually have some speed control and room to like play around in trick room. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. definitely isn't a team you can just uh, uh, bring a trick room mod on and uh, win from there. You definitely have they they still have definitely have ways to play within it. Sure. Yeah, uh, m most definitely. Um. Uh, is there anything else uh, needs to be said about this team? I like the Duraludon being able to like ignore uh, ally switches and redirections and all that. So uh, it's another uh, really interesting piece there is that Duraludon. It could pair well with the uh, Purloin going for like fake tears with the Prankster and all that kind of stuff. So there's definitely a lot of stuff uh, this uh, the opponents of the Card of Kamalas have to deal with. I'm really interested to see how they use that sock. Honestly, sock is a very interesting Pokemon in terms of like the fighting types. Yeah, 
You know, yeah, gets one, three really good abilities. Really good in uh, these non dynamax formats. So it's definitely got definitely gonna be definitely looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's one. It's one of the, like those like mid speed tiers to lower speed tiers, and it could it you could technically run in the trick room, but it's not really ideal. Um, you could put you could slap on a, a scarf on this and just spam coaching into um, either a Lando I or a Gyarados. Who would appreciate uh, those defense boost? So right, um, that, that's that's also something uh, uh, opposing teams would have to consider uh, when prepping against this team. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for for this team. Uh, next, we have the Machesney Park Slowpokes. I believe I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, so we have uh, Whimsicott. Uh, Salamence, uh, Volcarona, Diggersby, Weavile, Dragalge, Gardevoir, Golduck, Luxray, Dewblade, and the um, the Octopus guy whose name I just forgot. Artillery. Um, yeah, Artillery. There we go. Um, mm-hmm. th- this team I have like mixed feelings about. Like, I I I can I can see the many different modes on this. Uh, obviously, they have. Uh, their tailwind option with Whimsicott um, uh, paired up with one of their slower mods like Luxray, Golduck, or even Gardevoir uh, could definitely benefit from from the tailwind stuff. E- even a Salamence who's really fast already with uh, with Dragon Dance um, can definitely benefit um, when speed creeping against other uh, uh, fast paced mods. Um, mm-hmm. Again, they have they have redirection with Volcarona. A really good special defense. However, its uh, its defenses are pr- pretty bad, uh, so that's something I, I'm slightly worried about uh, with this team, uh, whose bulk is not quite there. Um, mm. But yeah, that's that's my overall view of this team. I kind of see kind of a trick room mode going with like Diggersby and uh, Dragalge and the Octillery, but. Two trick room setters are really fast, and Gardevoir and uh, Zakat. So I've always found it weird to have like a fast, uh, help fast trick room setter if you're playing trying to play in tr- trick room. If you're trying to play out of it and you just want to use it as like an imprison mod, then that's one thing. But uh, if you're trying to play in the trick room with a couple of these mods, then that might be a little difficult with their faster trick room setters. Yeah, I so I'll say the things I like about this team is I like the fantasy core. The specific one is the Gardevoir, the Dragalge, and the Dowblade. I think, you know, I agree with what Brian said. I think having fast trick room setters can be a little cumbersome, but the fact that Guardi at least gets in prison allows you to kind of be like flexible in that regard. Um, it also gets Shadow Sneak, which maybe you could use to proc a weakness policy on Dowblade, which I think is uh, kind of nifty. But Outside of that, the rest of the team, I feel like it just kind of stacks a lot of weaknesses that is not necessarily, like, good for it. Like, it has a fantasy core sort of in fast mode, too, which I think is not the most necessary. Um, like, just, like, looking at Whimsicott, Salamence, Stiggersby, all of them really weak to ice moves, so, you know, you, team's got to watch out for that. But other than that, I like some of the mods they chose individually. I'm just curious about the sort of the interplay of the synergies. Three yeah. of their mons have four times weaknesses and Whimsicott, uh, uh, Salamence, and Weavile, so uh, it's going to be pretty easy to slap a coverage move generally for those three specifically. Don't forget Volcarona, four times weak to Rock too. Rock, yep, that's another one that's like right there, so... Uh, and Rock, one of the most Rock has one of the most spammable spammable moves in the entire game in Rock Slide. So uh, I think uh, this team could have some troubles, but it could also uh, find some successes as well. Yeah, yeah, I I, I agree with you guys. Like, definitely, uh, Rock Slide is going to definitely be a huge problem, especially with this team. But I, I'm really curious to see what they can do with their support, um, like the Guard of War and the ones caught. And how they can uh, manage that somewhat huge weakness and somewhat maybe turn it into an advantage uh, for them in the long run. Um, mm-hmm. 
Anything else? No. No, nah, I'm good. Okay. Um, so next we have the Irish Incineroars with uh, Tyranitar, uh, Dracovish, Klefki, Magmortar, Graveri, Venusaur, Dugtrio, Lolan, uh, Rapidash, uh, Galarian's Rapidash, uh, Trevenant, Magneton, and Machoke. Just screams weather. <laughs> I'm seeing every form of weather you could possibly want. You've got the, uh, you got the uh, Tyranitar, uh, Dracovish combo. You got Klefki who can set Prankster Rain and Sun to pr to to support uh, Venusaur and Magmortar. Uh, also, that uh, does that Doug Trio get Sand Force? Is that one of the I, Doug Trios that gets Sand Force. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And then even the uh, he's even got he does have kind of the faster trick room, but kind of to imprison it as more. I can see. I definitely see the glaring rapid ash is more of an imprisoned trick roomer. Uh, uh, and then in the back, I'm liking uh, the bulk and like the choke. And then uh, I always forget that uh, Magneton actually has a decent speed stat at like seventy or eighty. So. Uh, Definitely, like, this is a team that hit, seems yeah, to be uh, on it's, one. It's like 70, 75 ish, I think. Yeah. So this will be a fun. This is going to be a fun team to watch, I think. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, they do. They do have the tail option as well with Bravery if they yeah, want to boost. Their, yeah. If they want to boost their speed, uh, either speed creeping, um, any mon that would outspeed them in sun or in sand. Um, so yeah, that's 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 an op that's the most eye eye gouging thing I, I've I've I'm just looking at this team right now, um, but yeah, sand um, and and sun, uh, two two diff two different kind of like opposite weathers combining together and just and mixing the together. It also gets harvest. So uh, if he wants to run like the bulky one in the sun. With like uh, one of the berries or whatever in the sun. I think with harvest, it's like guaranteed to happen. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's gonna be hard to mess with. This has got weather screamed all over it, and I'm gonna love to see how he uh, uses each of them. Not as much of a, a rain setter or a rain abuser, excuse me, but uh, definitely sand and sun is gonna be uh, fun to watch. Yeah. Um like I was going to finish, um, I feel like both weathers, I mean, to me, like, to, to me, like, both weathers are kind of, like, opposite of each other. Like, I can see the both weathers working together. It's just that I'm curious to see if um, one is going to be more, more prominent than the other or uh, the coach is going to mix them both um, into potentially into going into one, into one match and using them both at the same time. Uh, that's my slightly my main concern uh, when setting up both letters at the same time, but I feel like I feel like overall uh, it's it's a, a good team. I like the weather option. Um, I like the trick room option as well with Trevenant and a lot of support coming from a choke and Magneton. Yeah. Yeah, I actually think that they have, well, they don't have, like, a Swift Swim user or, like, a Rain abuser. I think that, you know, like, Rain Dance plus Scarf Dra uh, Dracovis with Ficious Ren is still something, like, that they could run. A lot of their mods happen to actually be weak against Fire, so, like, having the Prankster Rain Dance is actually not always a bad call for this team, I would think. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, well, if there's nothing else to be said, I think we can move on to the next team. Anything else? I think we're good. I'm good. Okay. Next, we have the Holy Sopod Warriors, which is coached by Rex. Very familiar face. I've seen the OGA and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, we have Celestila, um, Tapu Fini, Verizion, Slazzle, Dracofish, Powdon. Stoutland, Obstagoon, Spirit Tomb, Rotom, Frost, and the Swoobat. Mm -hmm. 
So unlike our previous team, this one just has the one w- dedicated weather mode with the um, sand. I like that. I like that sand core specifically because they don't share that many weaknesses. I think the only shared weakness there is ice with uh, Dracovish and the Apaudon, but uh, yep. otherwise they don't share that many weaknesses. I ran a similar sand team, but with uh, uh. What's the rock one? Gigalith. There we go. And that just was incredibly fighting week. I didn't notice until much later. But uh, I definitely like that mode. Salazzle, you have to worry about support Salazzle all the time. And then even offensive Salazzle can cause uh, quite a problem to the um, correct uh, correct opponent or incorrect proponent, opponent in this in this sense. So uh, a lot to think about here. Yeah. And also stereotypes have to be Slightly wary because I'm pretty sure Slaz's ability is corrosion. If correct me if I'm wrong, which allows it to poison steel types. Yeah, so, yes, it does. Corrosion, so it can uh, poison those steel types. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that that's that's the main thing I've I see in Slazel, or it's one of the things I've seen uh, quite commonly um, in drafts. Mm-hmm. Um, Silasteela on its own is is a monster. Uh, no matter if it's in a uh, non-Dynamax or Dynamax, it just does a lot. Uh, it can be uh, offensive, or especially offensive, or it can even be a bulky support with Leech Seed and Y-Guard. Um, it, it just does a lot. Um, so, yeah. That, that, that's that's my say on Celestela. I think um, the Sand Moon is really good here. Um Stalin doesn't necessarily have to run Sand Rush. Intimidate is always good, uh, especially with this team uh, uh, who is slightly uh, physically weak, especially uh, the um, Verizion and the Obstacle. So Intimidate is definitely going to help uh, them out. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure Swoobot gets Tailwind and Trick Room. I'm pretty sure. Um, mm-hmm. But if, if it does get both moves, it, that definitely helps them out as well. Um, if they run run oh, trick room option with Spiritum. Tail room. I call it tail room when they get both tailwind and trick room. <laughs> yeah. Um Rot- uh, of Roton Flash uh, is another to me and is another wild card mon. Like you gonna you don't really expect it to come in most matches. Um but you 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 can um uh, you can expect it to be in the team preview, so uh that's something to consider and could throw you off, especially going uh, against this team uh, in matches to come. I'd like to see an automatic hail setter on this team with the Rotom Frost, so they could do like Blizzard spam and stuff like that. But than that, uh, pretty solid, I would say. Yeah, this to me, this is this is a scary team, and I'll openly admit I'm a little biased because the Firewater Grass Core with Salazzle, Verizian, and Tapu Fini, I actually have on my other team on my team in another draft league because they're very good and they support each other quite well. Um, I even though like the beat up Verizian is not so like I would say good in a non max league, but like the support moves Verizian has, I think, are what stands it apart from to. Um, from Terrakion and Kibalion. Uh mm-hmm. and also like that coming off of a very fast grass type mon is is very nice. I also love the sand mode. The Celesteela is just scary. I really like Obstacoon here um, as well. It's just like a general support mon, and also it has a great like uh, I believe it also gets quick guards. Another quick guard user, baby doll eyes, and Defiant as well. So it's just a lot of good mix and match. Uh, it has two team. really good offensive abilities and that Defiant and the Guts as well. And you could also argue Reckless as well as three really good offensive abilities. So, Yeah, uh, now, and I know I know he tussled with you a little bit, Brian, over the Spear Tomb. Uh, I can see why he wanted it to kind of just round out the team a little bit. Yeah, actually, uh, I was actually going for that Drake Azult. So, uh, but uh, in the end, he got it back. In the end, he got it back, so... We'll go over uh, that when we get to my team. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I would say, like, the one piece that stands out to me is the Swoobat, not just for speed control, but, like... So one of the things I do with Slaz on my team is I've often used it as a fling user, and, like, you can fling, like, a Salak Berry into simple weakness policy Swoobat, and it just becomes a yeah. monster. It's getting, yeah. like, double speed, 
four times boost in its offenses. Like to me, that that is probably one of the scariest like unsung combos this team may or may not use. Right. Yeah, I mean, and even like a simple beam into into a, either a Drake Assault or even a Celesteela is going to be very dangerous. Um, uh, depending on what strat uh, Rick wants to bring in Drake. So, um, yep. It's just really dangerous. Absolutely. Um, I don't think there's anything else is, uh, being uh, said about this team other than it's it's uh, really strong with the sand mode and really strong support. So, yeah. Uh, that's all for this team. Um, next, we have the Aetherius Salamandras with uh, a Tornadus uh, Incarnate. Excadrill, Gudra, Jellicent, Indeedee Male, Rotom Mo, uh, Fletchinder, Hitmonchan, Stunk Tank, Slurpuff, and the Pseudo Wudo. This I have a lot of questions for. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'm lacking any kind of s real synergy with some of these modes, uh, especially the. Uh, the Excadrill, there's not an auto sand setter there. There's no prankster sand setter. Uh, it's basically only got the uh, the uh, tailwind from the uh, Tornadus. I was looking to find the terrain setter, but NDD mail. So I'll pass, I can check that check that off the list. I, they've got that for the Embird and um, Slurpuff, but other than that, that's. I'm not seeing very much synergy. Maybe someone else can see it a little better than I can, but I'm not seeing it at the moment. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a little bit hard to see any synergy. Um, they picked a lot of like speed control options. Like there's two Tailwind users, there's two Trick Room users. Um, they have like sticky webs and all kinds of little neat tools like that. But you know, to see the cohesion is a little difficult. Yeah, I, I would agree with you guys. Like, the, there's a decent amount of support surrounding the team. Like, they do have Trick Room Jellicent, and they they do have the Gale Wings Tailwind and Prankster Tailwind, um, Fletchinder and uh, Tornadus, uh, respectively. Um, however, I feel like uh, it, it slightly lacks some synergy. However, uh, this there's this, there's a good amount of synergy that's in there. It's it's just really hard to see it working right now now we don't we don't know uh, uh how the coach is going to play out with this team so uh it's going to be very interesting how they work out through the season and uh yeah um they do have them burden stuff with uh the slurp puff and the ndd mail um that's one mode that i can see right now at the moment but i think like you guys mentioned before other than that there's nothing really any prominent modes that are eye popping for me at least. Sometimes those are the scariest teams to come up against because you have literally you might have some idea of what uh happened, what could happen, and then just none of that happens. It's like wow, this team uh, pretty good. So uh, not saying that not having an obvious mode is bad. It's just hard to see at team preview so that might actually just be an advantage for uh him as well just um having that element of surprise yep. yeah i would i would agree with that um one thing i was thinking about is that uh that pseudo wudo pick uh, i'm not sure if they have a beat up user because beat up rattled is actually even for a mono slow pseudo wudo still something to be careful about i was keeping my uh, eye on it during the draft myself um, so that's another little potential fast combo that they could possibly uh, whip out that you might not expect. Um, doesn't I don't know if Skun Torn tank. gets beat up. I just I don't know if uh, I don't know if Skun Tank gets beat up. Skun Tank does not. Let me look up Tornado Tornadoes. Uh, no beat up on Tornadoes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they don't. As far as we know, we don't see any prominent beat up users. So. That option is out of the question as of as of right Maybe now. Maybe so. something they could look into in their trades uh, throughout the season. A beat up user that might uh, work good and 
to be a sucker punch user. Yeah, and they still have a couple of um, just a, a couple of neat like they have so many speed techs, but like you said, this the lack of synergy I think kind of hurts their ability to use like their speed techs effectively. Like two essentially prankster tailwind users, a pretty bulky trick room setter, one that also comes with psychic terrain. Like you just put a sash on it, but you know the other pieces don't. We can't really see how they fit, but I'll be I'll see what they're. Their game plan is throughout the season. Yep. Um, so I guess that's all for this team. Uh, mm-hmm. Next, we have the. I, I don't know how to pronounce this. Uh, I'm gonna just gonna butcher it slightly. Uh, the Camareg Crawdons. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce pronounce it. Um, any mean, well, I mean, any uh, fans in Wales, we deeply apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I <laughs> we all deeply apologize if we mispronounce uh, the name. Um, so we have uh, Torkoal, Aromatisse, Gallade, Gotharita, Crobat, Lilisk, Lilligant, Durant, Glaceon, Flygon, and Dedenne. Um, I can I, I, I do see the sun mode, uh, especially with the Torkoal and Lilligant, um, and the, um, Heliolisk with solar power. Um, those three months are very prominent, especially in mm. sun mode. Um, however, I feel like that, that's kind of like anti-synergy, especially with the Durant. Um, if it comes, uh, the sun is definitely going to hurt it, um, coming up against other fire types. But I'm pretty sure they do have Rain Dance, so... Um, yeah, the Gallade like, gets Rain Dance. I know the Gallade gets Rain Dance, so yeah. uh, there are ways to counteract a fire mode if it's coming at. I'm interested in the Dedenne. Uh, it's... Got the plus minus with entrainment, so he can put it on literally any of his special attackers, and the Dene has a decently uh, fast speed stat. So I'm that's one of the things I'm, it could possibly give and give a plus minus to like Glaceon, to uh, Heliolisk, to Torkoal, to Lilligant, to Aromatisse. Like a lot of things could. Uh, benefit from uh, being able to boost their uh, special attacking stats by one for free, essentially. So uh, that's uh, something I'm looking forward to um, seeing him put into action. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, The one thing I do know about this team is that the coach is fairly new to uh, this type of format and the VGC entirely. Um, Mm. So um, I'm very, I'm very, I'm uh, looking forward uh, to the progression, especially in this draft and in mm-hmm. future. So, um, uh, my, my regards is that I wish them good luck through the rest of the season. Hopefully, um, with the different modes I've seen in this team, hopefully that plays a good part into their success, uh, moving forward. Um, yeah. Never, uh, disrespect a team that has aromatisse on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, may- uh, I don't know if you guys know, but Matrix loves Aromatisse. Uh, you could yeah, say it's um, his favorite mod. He's, um, yeah, he, but, I'm with him in the UGA a lot of the times, and yeah. we share um, a server together, so I know Matrix very well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I was I was about to point that out. Uh, Aromatisse uh, has, I think, uh, it's like a room a room avail and the other ability. room avail and sweet veil. So you yeah. could either. Uh, it either can't be taunted, or it either can't, or well, your team can't be taunted, or your team can't be put to sleep. So yeah, so two good abilities and uh, within itself, um, really good trick room option, uh, really good support option as well. Um, I believe it only gets access to. I don't know if it gets either access to reflect or light screen. It's one or the other. I don't know if it, it gets both. both. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then also we have to think about that Gotharita with the shadow tag. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so that shadow, shadow tag is, 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 is really dangerous, uh, especially in this, in a series, series 10 format. Um, yeah. yeah so trapping in, uh, mons that don't normally want to take, um, either a strong fire move from a Torkoal or even from a Heliolisk is def- definitely going to be really good. Um, with this team, I would say. Mm-hmm. 
then the, the Lilligan with like After You and the Sun, that's a really good mode right there as well. So, so even though he's a beginner, he's drafted some uh, really good mons. So, looking, we're looking forward to see how well he does. Yeah, same. And I like their team a bit more after Grace Trades. They actually made a few, because notably, uh, Turtonator, I believe, was originally on this team, and uh, they traded it, I think, for Flygon, which, spoilers, helped me a lot, big time, um, mm. when you get to my team at the end. So I think I like what they did with their Grace Trades. Uh, the one Mon on their team I'm really curious to see how they'll use is the Glaceon. I'm not quite seeing how it fits, um, at least in a non-max format, because like I see a lot of Ice Shard, proc, Weakness, Halsey procs, um, but I also see a lot of these mons who would not really enjoy taking a, an Ice Shard, even from Glaceon, with minimal attack investment. Mm -hmm. So I'll be curious to see how they use that specific mon to their advantage. Yeah, uh, probably, I I guess I could see Icy Wind strats a lot, like throw his Choice Scarf on it and just slow the opponent team down. That's a decent way to... Uh, run the Glaceon, so... And it yeah. still does get Baby Doll Eyes and Yawn, all the EV support moves, so I think that's a good that's a good point you brought up, Ryan. Yeah, um, another thing I forgot to mention, they do have Crobat, so they do have, they also have that Tailwind option um, yeah, to be auto, really fast. Almost an automatic Tailwind with the uh, inner focus there. Yeah. Yeah. Almost um, <laughs> anything else? Hmm. No. Nah. We're good with this one. Is that the last of the uh, Emerald Division? Uh, yes, that would be correct. This is the last team from Emerald Division, and we are moving on to the Platinum Division. And lo, lo and behold, the first team is me. The and and lo and behold, we're all in this division, right? So <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, so first off, we have Purloin, Toracat, uh, Serena, Nido King, Riolu, Sh Sharpedo, Agron, Tangela, Siglip, Licky Licky, and the Spectre. I'll let you guys take it away uh, with my team. Uh, well, it wasn't Perloin, it was Lipard, but we'll let or that Lipard, slide. sorry, sorry. I, I get confused <laughs> between both because they're, they're just from the same evolution line. Yeah, it's they're essentially pretty similar. So, but. Uh, I like some of the pieces here, definitely. The Serena is definitely um, a mon that you have to account for. With that uh, Queenly Majesty uh, protecting you from all... Pro Does it protect your entire team or just the... Uh, I think it protects you from the, from the entire team. It protects so, like your whole side of the field from priority. Well, yeah, it's so out. That's what I was thinking. So uh, definitely, uh, you're you're not too scared of uh, fake outs. You're not too scared of ice shards, aqua jets. Uh, with that thing, we always have to account for that. Tangela, uh, I think, is one of the better lower tier uh, mons when it comes to um, redirection with like the rage powder. But you could also run the sor the chlorophyll uh, one with like uh, sleep powders. Uh, I think it gets access to sweet scents. Uh, a lot of uh, fun stuff with the Tangela there, and then the Real Lou. Just we know what Real Lou, Real Lou does. Prigster coaching is very good. <laughs> coaching is one of the better moves in the game, and specifically a non-max format. So, um, looking forward to seeing how the rest of the team shapes out. Yeah, I, I have to agree a lot with Brian. You have a lot of really good pieces like the Sarina and Toracat. And I, I already hate Toracat. It's such an annoying mod to deal with. And I lost to it in a max format twice. So like I can only imagine what it's like when things can't just max and one shot it. Like it's really bulky with Eviolite. The parting shot, like pivoting is crazy. Um, and then you also have like a really blistering fast mode with the Sharpedo and the Spectrier, you know, covering your bases with Sigilyph, which can control your speed tiers and your mascot. While I don't know if you initially planned to draft it, actually works really nicely because you have redirection and setup for it or trick room and setup for it as well. Yeah, and, I, I did have uh, uh, it. It also did, has I... the uh, Cloud9 oh, yeah. ability as well. So uh, you can. 
to negate any weathers coming out. So. Yeah. Uh, also, to answer your guys' question, I did I did go into the draft wanting to draft Licky Licky. Um, it's is is I haven't I haven't I didn't I subbed in uh, as a replacement coach last season, but the season previous before that I did not draft it. So uh, a little a little bit of slight redemption drafting it um, at this season. Um, I feel like overall the plan going into this draft is that seeing from the past teams I've drafted, I've lacked support. So I feel like the main focus for me for this season and going to this draft was to getting a good amount of support. And that's what I uh, did uh, with this draft. Mm -hmm. Now, I feel like I did slightly top heavy, uh, a slightly top heavy draft with a lot of, of, of support. Um, and that's something I've been uh, debating with myself uh, the past couple of days uh, with this team. But I feel like overall, I was going to definitely play, play into my favor, especially with uh, with my heart, other hard hitting mounts like Spectre, Licky Licky, uh, Nido King, Igrong, and Sharpedo, respectively. And again, yeah. Sigilith being able to cover both sides of my slow and fast modes uh, with Tailwind and Trick Room uh, is, is really good. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about my team. Yeah. I think that's a good analysis. Yeah. I agree. Oh, and also, um, before I had two ghost types, um, and I traded away the Poltegeist uh, during grace periods for Agron, noticing that I had um, a decent amount of uh, flying and ice weaknesses, so Agron covers those both both of those weaknesses, um, being a rock and steel type. Um, yeah, it's just another way to covering my weaknesses. Dude, you do also just kind of have a faster... Uh a faster trick, a trick room setter as well. So that could be something you could look into trading at some point. Maybe get rid of one of your ice weaknesses for a slower trick room setter if there's one still available. But other than that, I uh, don't see uh, too much to complain about. Yeah, I did explore that option um, post-draft, um, but I didn't mm -hmm. see any prominent uh, slower trick room users um, in the Fair. tier uh, Siglith was in. So I decide just to keep that in rock. You can just put, you can just slap like iron ball on it and yeah, it'll be fun. <laughs> so yeah. speed wise and um, I don't think there's anything said anything else to be said about this team. Um, <sighs> yeah. Uh, next we have the Tokyo Terrors. Um, mm -hmm. we have the Dragapult, Colossal, Impidim, uh, Confei, Excavalier, Scrafty, Crustal. Baractus, Audino, Swampert, and the Arcanine. This one is a little weird, in my opinion. Not bad weird, but just... Uh, I think it falls under one of the... Uh, Blaine's already about another team. There's not just like a lot of like inherent synergy at the very front. Well, that you can just see automatically. You can see a couple of... Uh, Pokemon that like uh, setup and the crustal and the um, colossal, but there's not a redirector to help with that setup. Uh, you do see the Comfey there that could uh, proc a policy on a couple of Mons, and then I do like the Impidimp. Um, it's a pretty decent uh, support at the lower tiers. The it's got a decent trick room mode there as well, so... But not a lot of really trick room abusers. The only two trick room abusers would be that I'm seeing are the Colossal and the Escavalier. So, it's a little different. But, uh... Not bad, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's awful, but... Yeah, um... Like, even, like, the most prominent um, mode we can see is Dragapult, or... Uh, Col Colt Colossal, um, I should say. Yeah. Um, oh, very yeah, good in, yeah. yeah, very good in the Dynamax format. Um, I've not seen it prominently used in a Series 10 draft, so I'm very interested to see how well it performs. But I, I still think even from taking a lot of damage, I don't know if it'll take a lot of damage from Surf or even a, an Aqua Jet from a Swampert. Um, is uh, going to be very interesting. 
um, paired up with Steam Engine and Weakness Policy, and another mode uh, with Swampert paired up with Kofi with the Giga Drain Weakness Policy stuff. Um, again, it's, a, it's, an, it's another interesting mode. Um, you're ex- uh, most people are, are excited to see. Um, and also the uh, Shell Smash uh, Crustal is another another mode uh, uh, most people can point out uh, with this team. Yeah, but it doesn't have... It's not a real safe uh, Shell Smash. There's not a redirector there, unfortunately. Yeah. That would have been really good. To, I think this team could use a redirector if there still is one, or it could have used one at some point. But other than that, it uh, can be... Uh, a bit hard to these teams that don't have these inherent synergies are often some of the hardest to prep for in totality so yeah i i would have to say if this team had redirection of any kind again it just opens up so many more avenues for it um that being said i actually disagree with the impotent uh mm-hmm. pick i think that if it was morgrim i think i would be more of a fan um, mm-hmm. They had originally had, I think this is the team that had Purloin originally, and they traded it to oh. a, another team for Impidem. And I think that trade kind of, in my opinion, it kind of set them back just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Impidem versus Morgan, like, I mean, you don't get any screens. You really just get, like, the basics. You get Fake Out, you get Thunder Wave, you get, like, Taunt, I believe, and, like, Foul Play. Um, whereas I think... Tears. You still get fake tears with the impediment. right fake tears, but I think the I think the weather moves that the pro land could have had might have helped benefit this team a little bit more. Um, you mm-hmm. can set up rain dance for the escavalier you to protect it from fire moves. You get a uh, sunny day chlorophyll. Um, I mean, I kind of get why they might have gotten they might have picked it up. You know, you get some side sucker punch usage um, out of it if you want to. You know, just for some extra damage or to like proc something mm-hmm. on dragapult, but. I, I think I would have liked I liked the Pearl Lane personally better. Um yeah. I really like their Firewater Grass Core in the Maractus, the Swampert, and the Arcanine in particular. I think those are some really nice picks for series. That's another 10. one that works both in like rain and sun, but he's not got a rain or sun setter. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that, right. That's exactly why I like the Pearl Lane. Um, I like the fantasy core as well. Uh, even though it's non-max, uh, I like the Dragapult. Still got a lot of support moves. Comfe also good for the support, and Escavalier is just a beast if he gets Trick Room up. Um, I think the Colossal is like that weird anomaly pick, but I was just thinking about how much of a great switch in it makes for Escavalier because if you try to throw fire attacks at it, and then Colossal switches in and then gets like plus times four speed, even though it's not maxing, like. It's still gonna be in a lot of trouble. It's damage. Cause it, yeah, it, like exactly, it's damage. You know, or you could run it with like, like he could have it as a Willow Wisp user. Like, you just never really know. Yeah. I think Colossal is one of those with like one of the guard moves. Look. Yeah, that that one I can't say I'm sure about, but I just I like that little Why? bit of synergy. I know, I know he, Crystal mind. gets white guard. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm gets fairly sure it does get white guard. Um, but Colossal got one of the wides. Yeah. Um, no, I believe the only Trick Room setter on this team, since Kofi no longer gets Trick Room, um, pretty Kofi sure that still gets Trick Room. Kofi oh. still gets Trick Room. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah. two Trick Room users with um, Kofi and the Audino. Um, like the, Kofi's the one instance where it's okay being a fast Trick Room setter because it gets so much priority. Mm. Priority still goes first in uh, trick room modes, so do yeah, like yeah. Uh, Comfe as a uh, as a uh, trick room setter. Uh, but it's pro- it's easier to be taunted, and most likely it's uh, be want be wanting to run either the poison berry or the the berry berry. So uh, definitely going to be it might be a little harder to get up the trick room if you're. Uh, Especially if you're double targeting into it, but uh, I think he can make it work. Yeah, I can also use uh, the slower trick room option with Audino. But the Audino like is a bulky normal type, especially if, uh, in the tier that's in. So mm-hmm. um, again, it's another another trick room option they could explore. Um, Audino is an underrated trick room option in the lower tiers, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else. To- 
being said about this team. Um, I think overall, I, I, I see the the different modes that they want to run. Um, however, I feel like, uh, like you guys said, the impotent kind of slows this team slightly down, especially not having screens and some of the other moves uh, Morgrim or Grimstar would get. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is a, a, even though I like the impotent, I do think it's one of the weaker... Uh positions and possibly one he could look to look look forward to uh he could look into uh opting for something maybe a little better that supports uh essentially the rain and uh on mode that he's kind of got there yeah so next we have the holy city weaviles um with alcremi dreadnought Lorantis, uh land landerus therian uh, Thunderous Incarnate, Kobolion, Corsla, Galar, uh, Explode, Pelipper, um, Beartic, and Hydreigon. So he's got the, he's got two genies. That's always good to have a genie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got two uh, kind of more uncommon Swift Swim users when paired with the Pelipper. I know a lot of people like the Ludicolo with the Pelipper. He's got uh, Airtick and uh, and yeah, Dreadnought. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. As the uh, rain abusers, uh, two ways to set rain automatically with Pelipper, and then with like a prankster rain dance with the thunderous. But outside of that, I'm not a big fan of the Corsola in a VGC format uh, specifically. Uh, I do like the uh, Lorantis with uh, at, uh, Contrary, right? A contrary, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, it can do it both with the physical, with the superpower, or special with the leaf with the uh, leaf storm. Uh, but it probably wants to be in a trick room, and there's not a trick room setter here, fortunately. So, um, even though I like it, it's probably a little out of place. Yeah, yeah. Um... I feel like especially this team, they have a good amount of support. Um, Pelipper, Alcremi, just to name a few. Alcremi with um, uh, with with decorate, um, is definitely good. But um, redirection kind of just ruins that strat a lot. Um, I learned my lesson with that uh, uh, when using um, Alcremi back in the day. So, um, yeah, I feel like yeah, that's all I have to say about this team. The Alcremi does also get uh, the abilities that Aromatisse has with Sweet Veil and Aroma Veil, so uh, it's an interest. Um, it's an interesting whether uh, he sees a lot of sleep stuff, so he could bring like this the um, Sweet Veil, or if he wants to use a lot of supports with the uh, Nurse there, he could bring the uh, the Aroma Veil version. Uh, uh, then I'm not a big fan of the X Cloud. Um, I if there was a terrain mode there, that'd be really cool with because it's one of the normal types that gets terrain pulse. But uh, other than that, uh, not a lot of synergy there. Even with the rain mode there, there's still just not a lot of other modes there, in my opinion. Like if you had a trick room setter, I think. Uh, it could help him a lot. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, the double genies are definitely, you know, command their respect in their own right, but overall it does seem like, you know, that lack of synergy will probably hurt him even outside of, like, the little pairings of combos. But at the same time, at least while he doesn't have a trick room setter that's dedicated, at least he has... Two relatively, I would say, slow enough mons in Trick Room that can do very different things. So, like, he still has game plans if the opponent tries to set up Trick Room around him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree with you guys. Um, I feel like this team is sort of revolving around both the genies. And I'm not saying that's it's a bad thing. Um, it, it could be either or. Um, both, both being weak to ice moves is definitely a problem. Um, I could see happening in future battles and going uh, uh, throughout the season. Um, just something to point out. 
Um, uh, like I said before, they have a, they have a, a good amount of support, um, uh, which could tip the scales for them and in any battle. So, um, yeah, that's all I have to also, say. Also got to watch out for Scarf Decorate, just thought of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I think that, I think that's all for this team. Anything else you mm -hmm. guys want to say? Yeah, no, I think we're good. I think we're good too. All right. Uh, next, we have the Crushing Silk Alleys, which is my week one opponent. So, some when you're watching this, don't take this personally, but I may judge your team uh, quite harshly <laughs> just because you're my week one opponent. <laughs> um, um, but we have uh, Cinderace. Uh, Gorgice, Togekiss, uh, Hitmonchop, Chalcon, Sabali, Porygon, um, Orbeetle, Dredigan, Toxpex, and the Steelix. Normally, Togekiss is really good uh, in these uh, formats, whether it's a max format or not, but I'm just not seeing a lot of. Uh, I don't think this is a team that could use Togekiss. There's not a lot of setup sweepers. Uh, everything that hits hard just already kind of hits hard. It doesn't really need a boost in order to uh, set up in order to do it. Uh, these I do like the Trick Room mode with the Porygon, Orbeetle, uh, Steelix, Drudigan, Toxic, um, Toxapex, and. But other than that, uh, that's kind of what I have to think. That's kind of what I think. You all, and you also have to respect uh, Cinderace at all times. So, yeah, I feel like the different parts of the team kind of, kind of, it's like it's like a it's like a mixed relation between all these mons. Like it, uh, every mon in its own right has a has a good good side, uh, depending on which mode you're going to be running. Um, but the, one of the interesting things I want to see is like how well uh, the Togekiss uh, pairs up with uh, all these uh, bulky slash support mons um, is 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 going to be very interesting. Um, again, it, it has a lot of it has a lot of bulky mons like the Steelix, Stratagon, Togekiss, um, uh, even the or even the Porygon or Beetle uh, in their own right are really bulky. So. Uh, I could see uh, in future games past week one teams struggling with uh, struggling to KO uh, these bulky mons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had um, I had pointed out to this coach when they had made their own uh, team reveal video that one of the things that I actually miss about their team is they had uh, they had Rillaboom on this team somewhere initially, and I think they replaced it with the Gorgeist, and I wasn't like super. F keen on that trade i feel like the rillaboom cinderace uh combo with some of these support options put on a lot more pressure on the opponents as far as like offensively um whereas now like the team has a really strong i would say trick room like mode but overall like it feels in some ways it might be a little bit unbalanced um mm -hmm. but it does have the tools to patch that up in the Silvali and the hitmon top which are also very nice yeah definitely uh Fake out, intimidate. Uh, could even run technician for a little extra boost with its triple kicks and fake outs. So, uh, I think the him on top looks uh, pretty good on this team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, again, Jolteon, uh, another another great uh, one of another great of the evolutions um, has two uh, good abilities in Bolt Absorb and Quick Feet. Uh, quick Feet is something really common, especially in a Series Ten draft. Pairing up with uh, a burn, a burn, most likely a burn, a burn flame orb. Sorry, um, getting that double speed um, applied to its already high base speed um, is really good. Um, getting fast thunderbolts, um, electro webs, bolt switches, um, those are always good, uh, good, good damage options or uh, speed reducing options um, yep. for this team. Agreed. And don't forget the, the the support moves on all the EVs, like the Yawn and Helping Hand and all that kind of stuff. Fake yeah. Tears, Baby Doll Eyes, so it's all that, so definitely uh, something to think about as well. Yeah, uh, also the Savali 
since it can be any of the one out of, I think, 18 types, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm mm -hmm. wrong, if there are more than 18. Pretty sure there's 18, 18 types. Yeah. Um, so it can be any of all those types. So again, it provides another uh, good synergy option depending on uh, each week if it wants to be a grass type, a fire type, a ground type, or any other type um, paired up with one of these uh, Pokemons. So mm -hmm. yeah, another good option for them. Um, I think there's anything else needs to be said about this team. Um, I mm -hmm. just really like the bulky options. Um, it has offer. I agree. Yeah. Right. Uh, next, we have the Bristol Beewares. Um, with Primarina, Crocodile, Zapdos, Galar, uh, Gengar, Sableye, uh, Walrein, Magmar, Manetric, Decidueye, Lycanroc, and the Weezing. <sighs> So, um, I like the uh, Zapdos Galar here. Um, it doesn't have too much to worry about uh, max airstreams or anything, so it's like actually a, a real viable uh, fi fighting type here. Fighting types, as I've said earlier, are always really good in these uh, on Dynamax Fornax with all of their uh, really cool supports and damage output. But, uh, is Weezing's role in this team. Uh, a lot of those mons like their abilities with um, Zapdos Galar being one of them with the Defiance. Uh, you definitely want Crocodile to have its abilities, whether you want it to be running uh, Intimidate or Anger Point. Uh, that Manatric definitely likes to, light, likes to be a Lightning Rod supporter. And then, obviously, Sableye with Prankster. So there's a lot of uh, mons on his team that want their abilities. So I'm questioning whether the weaving on the team is going to be more of the uh, neutralizing gas or if it's going to be the levitate weaving for the ground immunity. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know. I'm pretty sure you guys were in the server at the time. Um, however, weaving did make it to the finals um, with Sam, who is the runner-up from last season. Mm -hmm. So uh, Weezing has a good amount of history getting all the way up to the championships or even yeah. playoffs. So um, that's something to consider um, mm -hmm. uh, moving forward into the weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I can't afford to give away too much of what I really think about this team because this is my week one opponent. Um, and I'd be really remiss to give away all of my strategies, but I will say that I like the team. I like how supported, like well supported, the pieces are. Like the Manectric um, keeps the electricity away from the Prim, the Zapdos, and the Walrein. The Weezing can freely switch in and out to turn off or even reset abilities, like with Intimidate, um, Sableye. This is, a, uh, this is a second league I have to face Sableye in week one. Sableye is just so annoying to deal with as a prankster. Um, and then Gengar is equally annoying to deal with on the fast end. They've got Lycanroc for priority Acceleroc. Like, it, it's a good amount of coverage, just, even though there's not, like, really, I would say, painfully obvious synergies. Um, all that means is that that's even more of a reason to fear this team because then you really don't know what their game plan can be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with um with all you guys' points. Um I feel like uh the main staples with this team, uh like you guys said, uh Sableye, uh Gengar, Crooked Owl, Prim, uh Zapdos, like like all those all those five moms are like basically like the the main supporting cast uh for this team. But even then, like the other moms are good on, on their own, like Lycanroc, um Celerac is really good. Um up, up against uh, other flying types, uh, which help coverage uh, these uh, Zapdos Scholar's weakness. Um, again, uh, Manetric with Lightning Rod is always good. Even the Magmar with Flame Body, uh, switching it in and taking a physical uh, move and having a chance to burn the opposing Mon is always good. And same thing with Wall Rain, 
of having two good abilities in Thick Bad and Oblivious. Um, really good against uh, other uh, in inti other Intimidate Mons and taking a, either a Fire or another Ice move uh, uh, when normally uh, Mons like Permarina who are free Freeze Dry and uh, same with Zapdos uh, don't want to take um, a strong uh, Ice move. Yeah, I would say I guess the only thing this team might use as an improvement is like a slower trick room setter just because Gengar is pretty freaking fast and I believe and I'm pretty sure it's the only trick room setter this team now has. Um I mean granted they have pretty good speed control and prankster quash if you know when you can get that off. But like if they could say swap out the Decidueye for like I don't know if Pumpkaboo is on the list because I think Gorgas is way too high of a tier for them to afford, but like something like Pumpkaboo or like that would be I think it would be phenomenal here. But uh, the Gengar can imprison the Trick Room, so he might just uh, want to have it be sort of an anti-Trick Room mode rather than Trick Room mode in itself. Yeah. Because in these one max formats, it's a little easier to get uh, through Trick Rooms. So just a little bit easier than uh, like an UGA to get through a Trick Room without uh, these high power max moves. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see what he brings versus me week one. It's gonna be great. Yep, we shall see. Um, I believe I don't think uh, TP records. I believe you record. So uh, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get to see one side of the of the match. So um, yeah. Uh, anything else being said about this team? No, I think we're good. Yep, we're good. Right. Uh, next we have uh. Brian's team, uh, the Charlotte Girls, um, with the Rotom Wash, uh, Aerodactyl, Mian Shao, Orangaroo, um, Toxtricity, Flapple, uh, Sandaconda, Rabombi, Herdier, Rapidash, and the Kling Clang. I'll let y'all go ahead and talk for a little bit. All right. Um, the main thing I can see from here is definitely the Mian Shao. Uh, the Mian Shao is really annoying. Uh, gets Wygard, Fake Out. Uh, quick guard, um, coaching, all good support options, um, especially for this team. Um, you do have a, a good trick room and tailwind setter. Uh, Air Dactyl is decently fast, so uh, getting a trick room first turn is definitely going to help this team out. Um, oh, stuff like Flapple and the Rotomash who uh, want uh, that speed boost. Um, again, Orangaroo is really good um, with the trick room. In the um, the move is called um, instruct. Yeah, instruct. Um, uh, those two moves on the ring on the ring guru is really good. Um, Santa Kana is an interesting pick. Um, I do I do like it. Um, a good good strong ground type, a really bulky ground type. Um, so I'm I'm interested in seeing how how well it performs in this team. Um. Mm. Rubombi, again, is another good support mon. Pretty sure it gets Tailwind as well, so another Tailwind option. Um, has Charm and a lot of other great support moves. So, in, like I said, in general, it's a really good support. Uh, Herdier, uh, another great support with EVLA with um, Intimidate uh, spam. Switching, switching it in and out is, is um, typically normal for all int Intimidate users. Um, but again, it gets it gets a decent amount of support moves. Charm, uh, just to name a few. Uh, well, move um, is good. Uh, Rapid Dash and Clink Clang. I'm a slightly slightly biased about both. Um, I feel like uh, they're, they're they're not normal mons you would typically see uh, in draft, but um, I do I do like them for what they are and what they offer to the team. So that's my take on that. Um, I really like the Toxtricity, um, even though, uh, the Dynamax has been taken away from it. I feel like, uh, having fast snarls and fast, uh, overdrives, um, is really good. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah, I, I will say that I love your speed control options. Like, Arid, like, uh, Ted was saying, the Aerodactyl and the Oranguru are some of the best best 
tailwind and trick room setters that you could really want in draft. Uh, you have so many speed control options with there's electro webs coming from the toxicity, there's speed swap, there's electro webs coming from the Rotom. You know, you have two trick room setters at that, so you definitely have the speed control aspect covered. Um, I also like, obviously, me and Shao's great. We've experienced it a lot in these Nomax formats. Definitely great support. Uh, I've seen you use Rapidash really well in UGA, so, like, I don't know if that was just because you wanted a fire type or if that was more of a comfort pick or even both, but I like its place here uh, a lot. I would say the only thing on this team I'm, like, not the biggest fan of is the Flapple, but at the same time, I have to admit, I don't really... I've never, I'm more of an Appleton person that has like mm-hmm. played against it. But um, I know the flap will kind of misses, might miss the max a bit with the hustle ability. But like, that's about yeah, the only thing. They have three mons that wishes they could Dynamax in this format. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's like the vibe I'm kind of getting. Like the Santa Conda kind of in that same little camp of like wishes it could max but can't. Um, yeah. But overall, I like how you covered your type cores. I like how you covered most of your team's uh, weaknesses. And I did actually see your exhibition match versus Matrix, so I get a I get a little bit of insight about what your team can do, and it can do some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, uh, it's one of these uh, teams that doesn't have a lot of uh, synergy, but I already see about four or five pairings like right now, like, even like. As I've looked through the team, there's like so many pairings I could potentially do. So, hoping that's going to be my kind of surprise factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I feel like one of the like the changes you could potentially make is possibly trade for uh, Manetric, uh, which is on the um, let me scroll up on the uh, Beware's team, um, mm-hmm. pairing it up with a uh, with uh, either plus or minus uh, Clang Clang is really good. I use it in draft war. It's really strong. Um, again, it's just my recommendation. Um, mm-hmm. Making Kling Kling slight, uh, slightly more dangerous um, already since it already ha- it has a good amount of support with Trick Room, uh, Grew Grind. Um, uh, those two options. So that's just my recommendation. You can take it how mm-hmm. it, but you know that's just my take on it. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, um, I think that's all for for Brian's team. Um, mm-hmm. And next we have the Mega Sharpedo Lily Cove City, or just the Sharpedo team, I, I could say. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's the Lily Cove City Sharpedos or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have Grimstarl, uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike, uh, Dusclops, Reggie Steel, um, Cradilly. Lantern, Benelix, Flareon, Thwacky, uh, Ar- Arctovish, and Ditto. Very, very slightly wonky team, but it's a very good bulky team. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Dustclops and Registeel, just name a few bulky ones. Um, really good oh, yeah. in this format. Um, not like not being uh, being able to get rid of them really easily, like with a Max Phantasm or, or Max Knuckle. Um, is really good uh, for them in this format. Um, very strong trigger option uh, with the Dusclops, uh, Reggie Steel, and the Cradilly. So yeah, they're just just a few options that I see right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the uh, Rapid Strike specifically if it's ever in a situation when it's paired with the Cradilly. Because it won't be able to go for its uh, charging strikes with the uh, if it's running um, storm drain on it. I'm a little concerned about that, and uh, it's there's not a lot of offense on this team outside of uh, the Urshifu, unfortunately. So uh, this is gonna be it's gonna be. A little hard to do a lot of damage. It's, it's not going to take a lot of damage, but it's also a little hard to uh, actually do damage back. So I think that's something uh, he's going to have to think about. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Like 
this team is definitely super bulky. And to top it off, they have uh, Aurora Veil user who is relatively fast, as well as Prankster dual screens in the Grim Snarl. Um, so like they're gonna be able to sit and chunk hits all day. Reggie Steel uh, gets rest. Dusclops gets pain split. Cradilly gets recover. Like this team takes hits all day, and even if they can't do offense to you, they can just switch in Ditto and use your own offense against you, um, which I find to be really, really strong on this particular team. Like I wouldn't say Ditto is something you can slap on every comp, but like here, it kind of works. Like I really, I really like the Ditto pick on this on yeah, this I kind like of the team. Ditto. Um, I would say one of their weaker picks, but I kind of understand why they probably picked it is the Flareon. Um, I know it's probably just like fire types are already such a rarity in draft, and that's probably one of the reasons they needed a fire type and they drafted it. But it's not really having but so much synergy here. I mean, it's going to do guts, toxic flame, uh, gets toxic orb, but like with only you, I mean, I guess they have two fake out users, but I think outside of that, it's not really doing but so much. Um, I guess alternatively, you could run Flash Fire and have it as a switch in for Ready Steel or Vanellix. Um, low key, find the ice cream cone really underrated. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, but yeah, I will agree. It's a, it's a bit of a mishmash, but you know, if they can maintain their speed control um, and out bulk their opponents, I think they'll be very frightening to deal with. Yeah. Um, their hail mode is slightly weak. Um, I'm not a big fan of Archivish. However, I feel like in all intents and purposes uh, with this team, I feel like it has a, a good niche um, with Slush Rush. Um, it does have it does have Fish's Run, so it can hit really hard um, with that. Um, again, uh, having Acid Crush boosted by the Hail um, is also good. Um, but yeah, other than that, like like I said before, it has a really strong bulk. Um, and also, like what you guys said, like uh, this struggle, it's, this team is going to struggle uh, to get that offensive output um, from uh, the months that could hit really hard um, and are also bulky at the same time. So, um, is there anything else uh, even being said about this team? I think I think we covered it. Yeah, I mean. Three water types and storm drain. I just really hope they don't misclick very often. Honestly, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be really hard to. Uh, it's, it, you will not be able to use water type moves on your own side of the field if unless it's like a surf. Surf's the only way to get around that. So, uh. and then we have we're saving the best team for last. We have the Miss Magical Marauders. I'm pretty sure that's how you spell it or say it. Um, yep. Um, so we have uh, Thunderous Therian, uh, Quagsire, Roserade, uh, the uh, Turtle Squad member, forgot, uh, Terminator, sorry. Um, we have Mimikyu, uh, Hitmonlee, Berserker, um, Frostlass, Ndidi, Female, Urshifu, Single Strike, and Inteleon. I think he watched some of my draft league battles with Berserker and Thunderous Therian, so I like that. I like those inclusions on that team. Uh, the terrain mode with Ndidi Female with the um, Unburdened Hitmonlee uh, is always going to be uh, something people have to, met, have to uh, react to. Uh, Trick Room uh, with Mimikyu, fantastic Trick Room setter, hard to... Uh, Oko, um, especially with that disguise ability. So a lot of uh, good stuff and a lot of hard hitters as well. The Thunderous uh, hitting really hard, not even needing that much investment to hit hard. Uh, we got Crit City with uh, uh, the Inteleon and then the Dark Ur Dark Urshifu. Uh, always going to be really good. So a lot of good stuff about this team. Yeah, um, I feel like like one of like like the main thing is about this team. Like, I feel like this team is is missing Dynamax really hard, uh, like Inteleon and the Hitmonlee specifically. Um, like even like Inteleon without Dynamax is still gonna hit pretty hard with Sniper, uh, with um, the um, Focus Snipe Shot. 
Yeah, snipe shot with uh with the focus. focus energy. Yeah. Focus energy scope lens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's still gonna hit really hard. Uh, with with that specific moon set. Um, and the same thing goes for him on Lee. Like it's it's still gonna hit really hard under, uh, psychic terrain. Uh, getting them burn and boost. Um, you have a really strong trigger mode with the Mimikyu and the Turtonator, and even the Berserker and Quagsire. Um, so uh, that's something I'm a big fan of. Also, I, I really like Quagsire, just, not just because it has a derpy face, but just because of its typing with uh, with a water ground, uh, which offers um, a good amount of, of support stability uh, with this team. Yeah, I did my best to draft a very, like, I like type diverse teams, so I tried my best to get, you know, get my cores in and also make sure that, you know, the mods are well supported. Um, first time in my entirety of playing a draft league where I actually got the bottom wheel pick, so, you know, it was a little stressful at first trying to figure out, like, what to pick because you get, like, the the pairings and whatnot. Um but I really I like what I drafted. Um, I'm really happy ab about my trades. I think picking up the Turtonator, uh, shout out to the Crawdons for letting that back in FA. Um, it helped me like pick up the Firewater Grass Core that I think is a lot stronger than the uh, original three mods I had in those slots. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I do say um, the frost Lass is an interesting pick. Um, it got it does get the um, something skills. I forgot its ability. Ice like scales, it's, but yeah. without ice setter, he would have to have like hail on something. Yeah. It it does get hail also. So yeah, um, it can hail itself. I'm sure. So um, it yeah, does, you get the nice special tank with the ice scales, which is also kind of neat. Yeah, uh, it does get Tailwind, so you do have that Tailwind support. Um, and it can even run Quiver Dance if you want to go for a sweep option um, as well. So uh, that's just something to consider. Um, but yeah, I think that's all that needs to be considered from my side about this team. Yeah. Would agree. Okay. So um, that wraps up um, all the teams uh, mm -hmm. in the BDL string shot. Um, any closing thoughts on all the teams and anything uh, you want to say to the other coaches uh, moving forward? Uh, definitely don't take what we said like as an end-all be-all to what we think your teams are. These are just like opinions that three guys are coming up with uh we don't think any of these teams are bad or anything like that just yeah <laughs> don't take us too seriously <laughs> yeah uh i just want to say good luck and have fun to all of my opponents and just the mm -hmm. division in general i know there's a lot of people who are new to either vgc or just doing a non Dynamax league. This is actually my very first one. So just want to have a lot of good fun battles. And yeah, uh, don't listen to these two guys. I don't have the best team. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if, you, if you can put on a good show, you've done the right thing. <laughs> that's, that's how I see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, my message, I guess, is uh, I, I wish everyone to have a good season. Um, Again, uh, yeah, like you guys said, like don't listen to us. Uh, you, you, all the coaches know uh, the secret text behind their teams, and uh, and obviously the other uh, obvious stuff about their team. So um, just just take the, this uh, power rankings with a grain of salt, and uh, we will see how week one goes, and um, we'll see you guys uh, next time uh, for the week one power rankings after we after the week one battles. Um, so yeah. that's going to be starting the week one starts the week after Thanksgiving. So yeah. Uh, um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, until next time, video nation peace. Later guys. See ya.